Welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Now let's go to uh, Off the Press where we have a quick review of the major stories making headlines across Nigeria today. And uh, we'll be introducing our guests right after. Uh, I'm starting with the Punch newspapers this morning and uh, sharing with you a couple of the big ones. There it says, uh, Petroleum Industry Act loopholes. 36 states set up a six-member panel, plan amendments. Committee members, Delta, Oshun, Imo, Plateau, Borno, Jigawa, uh, finance commissioners also state governments to forward proposed amendments uh, to PIA implementation committee. Also on the punch, anchor borrowers, CBN incurs a 379 billion naira debt. Farmers battle insecurity. Strike continues. NARD insists as court orders suspension. Federal government, ASU, differ on delayed 30 billion naira revitalization fund. And seconders attacks wiki. Rivers Court suspends PDP chair. We can also find on the punch this morning, a Lagos artisan allegedly beat seven-year-old son to death over fish. Cholera, Belchi records highest cases. D uh, disease kills 1,768 in FCT and 23 states. Um, COVID-19, oxygen usage now 400 cylinders daily, says Songwolu. Government blames federal government as Saudi Arabia recruits Nigerian doctors. A group, rather, blames federal government. Uh, I think we can just quickly throw in uh, land grabbers, five killed, many injured in Lagos Ogun attacks. Let's take a look at uh, the Nation newspaper. Headline reads, PDP crisis takes a new twist. Um, it also says on the front page of the Nation newspaper, court orders government striking doctors to halt hostilities. APC secretary, ex-commissioners arraigned in Oshun, charged with assaults. Youth dominate INEC online voter registration. Buhari governors, others mourn Aguyi Ross's widow. Gunmen kill four, abduct 50 others in Zamfara community. 222 die of COVID-19 in Lagos, Ondo, Oshun, Edo state. Vaccination begins in Lagos tomorrow. Edo imposes restrictions. Five feared killed in land grabbers invasion of Lagos, Ogun communities. And lastly, federal government targets tax raise in 2022 to freeze borrowing. All right, moving on to the Daily Sun newspapers. More trouble for seconders. Court restrains him from parading as PDP national chairman. Court strikes, uh, court orders striking doctors to resume work. Robbers kill two policemen, injure others in Kogi. Again, Southeast residents defy sit at home suspension. Total compliance in Abia, Imo, Eboy, and Inugu, and the hoodlums and traders clash in uh, Onisha. Uh, we can also find here OML 11, Ogoni leaders vow not to allow Shell to return. Blackout in Lagos, Ogun, and others as electricity grid collapses. Robbers kill two policemen, injure others in Kogi. And um, we can also see here, don't impose cattle grazing on states, Tambowal tells Buhari. Also, cholera deaths rise to 1,768. Let's um, take a look at the stories making headlines on the Daily Independent. It reads, Tambowal advises Buhari against grazing reserves. Ask him to resuscitate them only where people are interested says Nigeria needs a nationalist, not tribalist, as a leader in 2023. Nigeria to get $3.35 billion as IMF $650 billion SDR allocation comes into effect. OML 11, Ogoni community vows to resist return of Shell. Court orders doctors to end strike. Court restrains seconders from parading himself as PDP national chairman. Reps reject customs 1.3 trillion naira 2022 projection insists on 3 trillion. Gunmen kill 4, abduct 50 in Zamfara community. Democratic Republic of Congo officials harass Nigerian diplomats, boggle embassy. Agu Yironsi's widow's death has created vacuum in committee of ex-first ladies. That's according to the federal government. Buhari Uzodima Moon Okwara's widow. NCC rakes in 358 billion naira from spectrum sale in two years. Lastly, Obiri Enugu Abakeliki on its streets deserted despite sit at home suspension. Let's now say good morning to our guest publisher of CKN News, Mr. Chris Wandu. Good morning to you. 
Good morning and thanks for having me. Okay, so the story that really caught my eye here on the Punch newspaper is, you know, the story tagged Petroleum Industry Act loopholes. 36 states set up six member panel plan amendments. So the question I would like to ask you is, would you say this is um, medicine after death? Because these amendments they're making and these panels they're setting up, they could have done this um, before the president gave his assent. Now the president has assented to it. And you know, if they go ahead with this, it's just begin a long process of amendment that would probably take years. So the question is, is this medicine after death? Oh, well, uh, it can be termed as a medicine after death. Um, but as I've always said, there's no perfect law so uh, across the globe. So laws are made, um, but uh, in some instances, uh, there will be call for amendment depending on um, um, certain indices and um, whatever parameter anybody is looking at it from. Um, I, I believe that um, the governors must have made their input. Uh, during the uh, consideration of um, clause by clause consideration of the of the bill that is now at the act, and I, I want to believe that they also made their own um, recommendation that it was not left for the National Assembly to uh, to agree to some of the suggestions that they made. Don't forget, before this um, act was passed, the Southern governors met in Lagos, and part of that resolution was that was the um, there was this recommendation that the 5% um, uh, fund to uh, to host communities should be sustained, or yes, should be sustained rather than the 3%. But the National Assembly in their wisdom um, refused to adhere to that. And then um, there were also certain other uh, recommendations. So um, they coming up with um, some of this issue now. Well, it may be looking, it may look too late, but... Uh, it is better late than never, but I don't know how long it's going to take for that to be that recommendation to come into effect, or whether the National Assembly um, will be able to agree to that. Don't forget that this act took over 20 years before it could be passed. It has passed several uh, amendments, several versions um, before we could get to this point. But good enough. Um, let's see um, what it will be. Another way of the uh, passing of this uh, process is by the governors going to court. If the, court, if the governors go to court and then the court make a pronouncement on some sessions uh, of that law, then, or that act, then uh, what's the, um, the court make a pronouncement and, and not uh, some of those uh, sessions, then it, it cannot stand again. So you don't do it going to national assembly. The best the government can do, the federal government can do, is to go to court to challenge that other the court of appeal and then they lose there, they go on to the uh, Supreme Court. So we might just be see a long battle um, and coming up. Um, but for now, the president has signed it and he has also set up a committee for the implementation and has given them a 12 month um, ultimatum to get that implemented. And uh, I think that is where we find ourselves. All right. Well, hopefully there's no uh, influence of uh, personal and political interest, um, you know, amongst the governors. Um, hope all 36 of them are on the same page. Let's move over to the NARD strike. The news says that uh, a court has asked the governors go to go back to work. Uh, Mr. Wanda, do you think that is possible? And, and uh, can a court order simply, you know, dis you know disable their strike? A court order is a court order. So the court has been uh, under the, the association may have no reason uh, not to adhere to it. Um, but from what um, I learned, the national president of NAT came out to say that there's nothing that's court order, that they've only read it on the pages of papers, it's on, um, been analyzed on television and on social media. Um, probably when they now, you just don't make a pronounce, make a pronounce that then. That order, then the association must get that order. Uh, but my own challenge here is that this cannot we cannot continue this way. Um, um, a situation where association uh, raise issues, you sign an agreement, you have a contract, and the federal government uh, religious on it. Then the next thing, when you go on strike, they quickly want to just strike court because they know they can get the restraining order or injunction just maybe to frustrate them. That this cannot continue. 
And uh, personally, if not for law, I would say the National Association of the NAD should continue with their strike and just call blood the bluff of the federal government until the full implementation of that. The court should have taken into consideration the fact that a contract was signed and should be able to look at that contract, not um, restraining the doctor and say, go back to work when you have not been able to reach an agreement on most of the issues raised by them. He cannot force me to go to work. If you force me to go to work, if I get to place and I don't do anything, what happens? You can only force the help, uh, the time to be to, um, to the river bank, but you can't force it to drink. So if the doctors are free and you are trying to force them to go to work, then what do you expect them to do? These are people that deal with human life. If they don't, um, they are not psychologically, mentally, and physically ready to do their job, then that's problem. So the ability for so I think we should be sensitive enough to be able to look at the plights of um, uh, these doctors. Not just the doctors. Now you see what Asu is saying. Yeah. The same thing happened with Asu. Same thing will happen with so many other associations that government have agreements and sign contracts. But at the end of it, they're in age. At the next day, it's quickly run to court. How, do, how can you continue doing that? You cannot play something or not. Um, but let's see what uh, now the, the do in the next two hours, whether they need to obey that or that or not. Okay. And then uh, we'll see how it pans out. Don't forget there have been instances in the past where uh, uh, those industrial courts raise those issues and then um, NLC just ignore it and continue with their strike. And nothing happened. Yeah, and also to just to keep in mind that, you know, we're currently in a third wave of COVID-19 and cholera. Um, has uh, taken one, more than 1,700 lives um, across 23 states. Yes, we are in serious um, um, medical and health challenges across Nigeria. Uh, Governor Sonwoli came out yesterday to tell us that about 135 Nigerians have died from COVID. That is just putting in mind. That is just, just the one that I recorded. I can tell you for that, that 135 would have had double that number that would have died without getting to the hospital now that are not detected. Then the issue of cholera is there, and there's so many other issues uh, going around. Now the doctors are uh, moving out to a brain drain. Just read uh, part of the headline, one of the people that they are moving to uh, some of the Asian countries. These are guys that are in high demand. A doctor is in very, very high demand anywhere in the world. Even in North, in high demand. That is why you see so many of the kids going to read North now. And the, the next thing they just check and go to the U.S. and other countries that they are high demand. We have just about 40,000 doctors to 200 million, over 200 million. Do the math and see whether we are even, we are even getting there. And the ones we have, we can't take care of them. It's just so sad. Hmm. Okay. Um, when we um, take a look at um, the politics in the a in the PVP, it seemed like you know the challenges with um, Secondus's chairmanship had been resolved because we know they had eventually fixed the dates for their, um, their convention. But what we're seeing across the papers now is that the PDP crisis, especially on the nation, says the PDP crisis has taken a new twist with Secondus's suspension and that um, a Rivas court has actually barred Secondus from parading himself as chairman of the PDP. The story is also on the Daily Sun. It says court restrained Secondus from parading himself as PDP national chairman. And uh, also on the nation, it says Jegede Obi Bode George for chairmanship race. Um, what do you make of this, Mr. Um, Wando? Well, what we're saying is because of Esau and hand of uh, Jacob, or is it the hands of uh, Esau and uh, voice of Jacob, whichever we, we call it. Um, this is just uh, orchestrated by the United State government. Don't forget that. Um, um, that court that order is coming from a, a court in River State, and um, uh, Governor Wike has been um, uh, in the trenches uh, um, against Secondus. And um, but I thought that um, that issue had been resolved, and it has agreed that um, the the national convention of the party should be moved forward. Uh, don't forget that the tenure of this particular uh, executive is supposed to last in December, but because of the crisis, then there was a middle ground. Uh, between the close uh, closing opposition uh, within the party that, uh, okay, let's um, have a, a middle ground. And it was agreed that um, um, uh, an election should hold, uh, convention should hold in um, October. But from what we had, we, we, it seems that uh, from what we had, alleged that the uh, second use have um, reneged on that um, uh, gentleman agreement and uh, saying that he's going to see it come out by December. So probably that is why uh, we're having this issue. But the fact is that it's also for the control of the heart of the party. Um, 
come 2023. 20, uh, and those who feel that um, they need to start um, getting their uh, art together towards 2023 are the ones um, raising up all these doors. But I don't know what the uh, WK is out to gain. Um, because first and foremost, it was one that got second use. Second use is also from Labour State. So why are you fighting your uh, kids, man? This that there's something that is not done. But um, Governor Ruka will not get his way, except he has the support of all the PDP governors. He alone cannot do it. If he has the support of the government, PDP governors now are divided along the line. So some are supporting second use, some are not supporting him. So the PDP should get their ass together. Just less than two years to the general election, and they get their ass together and they remain in the position for another four years. All right, quickly also react to the seat at home order in the southeast. Uh, the Sun uh, this morning reports that some states uh, fully complied, like uh, Abia and Enugu, while you know, residents in other states uh, went about their daily activities. Um, there's some confusion, you know, as to whether IPOB truly has, you know, uh, given a seat at home order to continue every Monday or not. Um, how do you react to this? You know, uh, Babole said it's starting up um, an issue. It's not a problem. Um, ending it is always a problem. That's the same thing is that it's not just um, giving, uh, giving a, 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 just climb the tree to give a, a drink to a monkey. The problem is not giving monkey, but the problem is not receive the cup from the monkey. Because once they give the monkey, start jumping from one branch to the other and the rest of them. Before you can even be able to drink that. So what we are saying now is that totally that is that Apple have put in lost the initiative. And um, they have control over what is happening now. They came up with that in that pronouncement that every month people should stay at home. Most of people often than not, people just receive first voice. The second is nobody hear it. So and it has gone into the the side of the people that we have, we have to remain, and that's, that is one. Secondly, it's not and also because people want to be at home. But because of fear of attack, some of them feel that if they go out somewhere, somewhere somebody will attack them or even get them killed, we search on that particular point. So um, it's not just out of it from uh, uh, compliance that they have to make because of the fear. And then the government of the schools are not even doing enough to make us switch the fears of the people make sure that they go about their business because the people have lost the trust in the government. So there's this trust deficit between the government and the people. So they can't even be government if you say come out and do that. So what we are having is um, a entire collapse of communication within the summit. And I think the government of the country should run it around with me to be able to listen to But if I could say that we call it off for now. Why should, this, why should people be saying that? The economic situation in the state is suffering. For every one day that is here at home, a lot is happening economically in that part of the country and is in the So, Wando, just a random one. Do you think um, a people can stand against a group um, and fully, of course, you know, go with whatever they choose? Do you think the people of the Southeast can decide that they're no, log no longer going to be you know, going along with the Monday's sit-at-home order and actually stand by that? Pretty much same thing with you know, those in the North. Can they also say that they no longer would allow or assist you know, with those bandits from their communities and they would take a stand against these people? Is there that possibility? It's possible to you. But whether it's going there, I don't know. That, that is where people are in the law into their hands. It's what happened um, uh, with the, uh, some of the um, uh, countries in North Africa. Yes, but people rose up and there was a revolution. And so many, um, uh, so many uh, gold coasts to near, or the name is so many, you know. So um, until the people realize that. They have the power to make effect change. Then nothing will happen. This docility has to stop. The situation where we have to be led by most should stop. The people have the power to be and they want about to decide that this is what they want. There's nothing anybody can. Even the so-called people living there. If they decide to go against them, then nothing happens. So uh, the power is an advantage. But can we use it to see what is the level of insecurity in that the governor of Kassina has to come and ask people to take to, 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 to us. 
What does it mean? That is a task of governance. So there is no trust in governance. We are saying that people should just take the law to their hand. Go and get the S-47 and the defense. What is also mean that those at the hands of affairs have to be lost control. The basic responsibility of women is the protection of life and properties. What we cannot be doing that, that is it. So what we are saying now, we are just finding that in this area, it is not everybody for, for, for himself and God for us, and we all survive at the same time. So what is the game of so, Yes, we can do. But we are well with that. That's the 100 million naira question we should ask. All right. Uh, I also want us to talk about the grazing reserve story. We saw that um, the governor of Sokoto State, Amino Tambual, um, was in Lagos speaking at an event where he um, advised the president, you know, to only allow these grazing reserves in states that are interested in it, and that if states, you know, oppose this idea, that you know, he shouldn't bother going ahead with it in those states, um, because of the possible clash that might ensue. Um, do you think that's the way to go? That is the way to go. I uh, hear you have years here. We already have an issue of security across the country. And the government, our security, are finding it difficult to be able to handle this. In the north, they are attacked by bandits. I don't even like calling them bandits. Attacked by terrorists. Um, that is how we should be able to um, stand them um, in the north. Um, attacks in Southwest, attacks in the, the agitation in Southwest, and, and so many other problems. I don't think we should bring the issue of um, headers, uh, grazing routes, and the rest of them in the mix, or yes, we're going to have serious problems. It has already been agreed that when the way to go is the president itself also came out said that at one point. So, why an issue of this is not that great for in the Nigerian Constitution, the right to land belonged by the uh, 1978 land The right to uh, elite land belongs to the governors. The governor of the state has the right to the except uh, for government land, federal land, that of their agency. Then in the local level, so, so level, it belongs to the local <laughs> So the president should just wake up that um, that kind of create a problem where there is none. Uh, for now, the way to is that as a president has taken a position to support people in his own part of the country. And uh, it, it, because I'm older, I don't know any people uh, into agriculture. I can sort of wake up today and say, okay, let me go to Benue or go to Casina to uh, uh, take up land for my own crop. Would they allow that? It, that, be, that is part of what we're saying that this current constitution, as we think, is not working for us and we need to do something about it. Oh. Until we're able to look at those out of our constitution that seems to kill and give some level of resemblance, not allowing the state to be effectively function. We will continue to have the same problem we are having now. Good enough, the federal government is going to be challenged. And I just hope that some other governors will also be, don't forget, to do state government to do that. The South South, um, the, the Southern government understand the issue of open grazing and grazing. In fact, Nikki, last week already, I think they put in a motion. A, a, a position on that uh, we may try to come up with all that. So the South have taken a position on open grace and um, uh, the country do just overheat the policy. We stay so much on our table that we are back. Okay, so... that of the uh, uh, grazing routes and the uh, what by itself to be a very, very big one to handle now. Let's continue to see a way of facing and making every Nigeria have a sense of belonging wherever they are. And not just making it feel that some people are just bigger and more we did the second than that. Okay, Mr. Wandu. Um, I think lastly we can take a story about a diplomatic role that is looming in the DRC, um, where officials allegedly harass Nigerian envoys. And um, basically, this story is something that happened in 2020 in March, but um, it's just um, coming out now. It says that there was an attempt to set the um, house of the ambassador ablaze in the middle of the night. The suspect was arrested. He was handed over um, to the police. Also in August, um, the Nigerian embassy in the DRC was boggled by a man and uh, by the police, actually. He was deployed to guard the place. And um, this news is coming just on the back of um, news that um, Nigerian diplomats were harassed in Indonesia. Well, that's uh, 
Uh, you are talking of Indonesia. Also, also forget that even within our neighborhood, yeah, our embassy was uh, invaded in Accra, Ghana, and um, buildings uh, belonging to Domas uh, were damaged by Ghanaian authorities. So you remember that we just some yeah. few um, years or some few months back. Um, well, that is where we find it. And until we start giving um, like a children, where we be able to take a stand on issues like this. Once this happens, there are only the magic ways of doing it. If you harass my people here, yes. you know what happens to the international community? Do not see America um, expel one Russia from America? What happens? You see Russia retaliating by either expelling two accounts or three immediately. That is diplomatic. That is diplomatic. What that, that signal gives you is that next time when you are thinking of harassing my country, my, our diplomats, and this, you think what? I think we shouldn't be. Getting ourselves in this kind of situation between now and then, every single day. This is not the time. Don't have to forget this. We had in South Africa um, some <laughs> young yeah, several Nigerians were killed uh, in those um, acts and the rest of them. At the end of the picture, what we do, we just um, try to parley the refugees and the rest of them. I don't know whether compensation were paid so that those Nigerians have lost their life. I don't think so. So I think we should start moving up to our, our responsibility as a nation that is independent, wherever and where and wherever they find themselves, we make sure that they are, they are well protected. But in a situation where certain individuals can go into the embassy, moving into the embassy of the Nigerian country is like walking into a rock. Because those embassies are the seat of power of Nigeria in that country. And by diplomatic um, um, constitution and nobody has the right to go to any embassy, any country in it costs a lot of work in the past. You cannot do that. If you have any issue with any departure you need to do is to report it, um, to the appropriate panel and the various agencies of government. True, that Mr. Mr. you really have Mr. Wanda, you really have described the uh, you know the accurate processes to take if you have grievances with um, such individual, but that's where we have to leave it here. And um, we thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, Absolutely. Having me. All right, stay with us. Uh, we'll take a short break. When we come back, we're going uh, just a little bit in history to the year 2012 uh, to tell you of an incident in Norway that shocked the world. We'll be back. <laughs>